Texas, starring Beverly McKenzie. Your, your wife? That's right, my wife. Don and I plan to be married. Oh, no. No, Dennis, you can't. You just can't marry that child. Can't? Come on, Mom, I'm going to get married. But to Dawn Marshall? That's right, to Dawn Marshall. Because I need her and she needs me, and what neither one of us needs is your opinion of her. Dennis, calm down. I only want what's best for you. I think I can handle that. Why don't you think about something else? Think about you and Alex Wheeler. I'll make a deal with you. I'll spare you my opinion of your little romance with Alex Wheeler if you'll spare me your opinion of my affairs. Dennis, please, Dennis, don't just turn away. I love you. I can't pretend you don't matter to me. What you think of Alex does matter more than you know. Look, he may be big in your life, but I don't want or need him in mine. If only you get to know Alex for what he is, not what someone else says he is. Don is wrong about him. Give Alex a chance to clear up this misunderstanding. Give all of us a chance. Dennis, just talk to him, please. Maggie? Maggie? Cuddle up to some dumb hit cop. You're staying home. Tell me about those three long years in here. What was you learning, baby? How to stand up for myself. Yeah. And it's too late to order me around. bar at this hour. Now, you are not pouring that husband of yours an eye-opener, are you? Oh, no, no, Maggie. Well, now, I know it's early, but I wanted to wake you up because I wanted to tell you that... Nita, what is the matter? Nothing's the matter, Maggie. Well, then why are you talking to me sideways? Nita, look at me. Oh, my Lord, how on earth? Well, I haven't seen a bruise like that since Max got kicked by a horse. Me, me and Billy Joe went to the top of the world club last night, and when we got back, the restaurant was dark as pitch, and I, I bumped into something, one of those chairs on the table. Well. Well, I was going to ask you if you wanted to go with me over to the hospital to see uh, Ricky, but I, I guess the doctors have put you in bed if they saw that bruise. Oh, Maggie, how's Ricky doing? Well, it's good news, honey. I I talked to Elena a little while ago, and he's out of danger now. Oh, well, thank heaven for that. It's the best news I've had since... Oh. Now, let's put some ice on that bruise. My word. Just, if you keep it on, it ought to help it just a little bit now. Come on. There. Now, Nita, I'm going to close the restaurant for a little while so I can go sit with Ricky at the hospital. In fact, why don't you come with me? I mean, if I leave you here, I don't know what you're liable to run into next. No, Maggie, I, I don't think so. I wish you would. He'd love to see you. Oh. No, I, I don't think I should go, Maggie. 
But you tell Ricky how happy I am. He's okay. And tell him how worried I was. But, uh... I think I should stay here, Maggie. Whoa there, boy. Hold on now. Where do you think you're rushing off to? <laughs> Whoa, yourself. Where you been? You weren't here when I got up this morning. Uh, not bad news about Ricky. I called the Gulf Coast Hospital. They, they wouldn't tell me anything because I'm not personal family. Oh, no. No, thank the good Lord. He's recovering better than the doctors expected. <sighs> but he will be lying in that hospital bed longer than he'd like. But he's a decker. Tough as horseshoe iron. <laughs> Even shutting him away on the umpteenth floor of that hospital won't ruin his health. So you, you drove into Houston just to see Ricky? Well, that was one of the reasons. You see, I've been worried about the state of this family, Justin. It's been a mite frail lately. Like a newborn colt. I mean to get it back on its feet. It'll mend, Grandma. So long as you're around, we're going to be all right. I hope so, Justin. <laughs> but, uh, I did manage to bring Dawn back with me. She's upstairs changing her clothes. How'd you do that? Did you put that old 12-gauge shotgun to her head? No. Or, or did she change her mind about selling the River Oaks house to Alex Wheeler? No. But I changed my mind. You changed your mind. That's not like you. Well, I... I know, but I... I got to doing some more thinking on it, and I... I decided it was much more important to keep this family together than to keep this old place. See, I always saw the ranch and the family as the same. But that drive into Houston... And that big, lonely freeway got me to thinking differently. <laughs> oh, and if you and Dawn don't want to sell the house to Mr. Wheeler, I won't press it. Grandma, it was, it was good of you to change your mind, but I... Oh, oh, no, no, don't thank me, boy. I've got my reward. And Dawn's got some news that'll perk us all up. <laughs> well, just tonight... Dennis and I are going to be married. Whoa! Oh, that's great, baby sister. Oh, now, you've got a good reason to stay home today, so we can all celebrate. Yeah, well, there's no reason for me to go into Houston. You beat me to it. I was just going to go in to talk to Dawn. This may surprise you, but after sleeping on it, I've come to the same conclusion you did. I, I don't see there's any reason at all why we shouldn't sell the River Oaks house. Even to Alex Wheeler. Has everybody in this family except me forgotten what Alex Wheeler did to Daddy? Justin, you of all people. You were the one person I trusted never to give in. But now, you too, Justin? <laughs> You really think I don't care? Justin, let it go. We all know how you felt about your daddy. Dawn was just letting her mouth get ahead of her brain. Something that's not unusual amongst us either. Now look, I swallowed my pride to be a peacemaker. And you can do that too, both of you. Sell or don't sell that place. It won't matter. At least not as much as whether we were ending up scattered to the four winds. Baby, we need each other now. Even more than we ever did before. Can you understand that? When Michael was with us, it didn't hurt so much if we let things slide a little bit. But now... Grandma, can no, 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 Let me finish, dear. 
We need each other. We have got to keep this family together. Well, that's all I have to say. Morning sun's about gone. I better change my clothes and get started on my chores. You're misreading me, baby sister. Don't give me that baby sister. I haven't sister. given up, not by a long shot. Oh, but you'd sell the house to Alex Wheeler anyway. Yes. Didn't you hear Grandma just now? Yes, I heard her. But she didn't see Mr. Wheeler hovering around Daddy's house like a vulture. Circling and... around and around Dennis's mother. Dennis's mother? Iris Carrington? Alex Wheeler's involved with... Apparently he wants Daddy's house for her. Carrington. Hello. Hello, Justin. Hi, honey, it's Rena. Rena. You crazy fool. Last night on TV, I saw you jumping into a smoking car out at the racetrack. <laughs> now, every soul in Houston may think you're a hero, but I think you're just a plain fool. Were you hurt? Oh, slow down, slow down, Rain. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, I burned my hands a little from the, from the hot metal, but uh, when the bandages come off, they'll be tougher than ever and strong enough to hold on to whatever is mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, what if I, t uh, I come out to the ranch and uh, take a look for myself? I'm not a doctor's wife or nothing, you know. And I won't be coming out just to look at the hands. I'll be checking out the whole work, Sonny. Yeah, yeah. Why, why don't you bring her, bring along your house guest to uh, show her what a real Texas ranch is like? Iris? Oh, honey, I, I'd love to take her out, but I don't even know where she is this morning. You know, she's only been here for a few weeks in Houston, and she's taken over this town like a, like a thunderstorm. Would you settle for seeing just little old me? Sure. Sure I would. We got a lot to talk about. I'll see ya. Are you out of your mind? Why did you invite Dennis's mother here? That is only going to stir things up again. Calm down, baby sister. She's not coming. She's probably with Alex Wheeler right now. Oh? Well, I'm surprised you didn't extend the invitation to both of them. Don, you don't know me. There's no way that man is going to walk away from what he did to this family. Not until he's paid the price. My price. Then why? Because you and me, we're doing what I accused Kate of doing. We're putting what we want in, in front of what's good for, for the family. Just, just cool it for a minute and listen. If Kate lost this ranch, she would die. The roots are, are too deep. She has no place else to go. And if we lost the place, we'd have nothing left of Daddy's. Justin, that doesn't make things right. You should just read what Daddy wrote about that man in his journal. Journal? That's right. Dennis found it in Daddy's desk when he inventoried the house for the auction. Get it. about one thing, Mom. It is very important to me that you're happy. Thank you, darling. But this meeting with Alex Wheeler, I know it's going to be awkward. I mean, 
What am I going to say? It's nice to meet you, Mr. Wheeler. And oh, by the way, I think what you did to the Marshall family stinks. Oh, damn this. Are you sure you have your facts straight regarding Alex and the Marshalls? Yes, I have my facts straight. Dawn told me everything I need to know. Has she really? You have only seen Alex through Dawn's eyes. And she's rather nearsighted as far as he's concerned, isn't she? You know something? Your view seems the same to me. You sound like the old Dennis of Bay City. Not the young man who came to Houston to grow up, to make his own way, to form his own judgments about people. Look, Mom, I don't need a lecture from you, particularly on judging people. This is a difficult time in both our lives. I'm not sure where either of us is heading. But I don't want us to take roads that could separate us forever. It's true I've always been frightened of your independence. You're leaving me. I guess I'm relying on you to hold us together. Well, maybe it'd be better for both of us if we weren't so together. What would we have if we didn't have each other? I'd have Dawn Marshall. And you? You'd have Alex Wheeler. Please, let me call Alex. Say you'll try to give him a fair hearing. What a glorious sight. Breakfast. Say, I'm so hungover, my teeth are floating. It's cold. It's been sitting there a while. Maggie fixed it for me before she left. Maggie ain't here? She closed the restaurant for a while, while she went to visit Ricky at the hospital. But you don't have to worry, Billy Joe, because I didn't tell her that you used my face for a punching bag last night. Tell her I used you for what? Never mind, I'm just glad she ain't here, because, uh, not getting some uninterrupted love with my sweet little wife. Oh, no, how can you touch me after last night? What does this burn your memory, Billy Joe? Well, my memory ain't hitting on all eight cylinders, but, uh, oh, baby doll, huh? that's a bad one. I didn't know it was going to be such a bad one, honest. Every time you hit me, it's bad. Things have been going so good for us. I believed you when you said things had changed. It's not my fault. It's that temper of mine. And you ought to know when to stop nagging at me. It's like cornering a wild dog. If you get him mad, he's going to bite. But it ain't his fault. I thought I married a man, not a mad dog. You know what I mean. I ought to be able to speak my mind. What kind of marriage do we have if I'm afraid to speak to my own husband? If I make you angry, you ought to hit a pillow or a wall or something. But Billy Joe Wright, don't you ever hit me again. It wasn't me that hit you. It was the liquor. I wasn't myself. Oh. I'll make it up to you, baby. I'll... I love you so much. I... Come on, let's go upstairs. I... I got a great cure for bruises. It'll get the blood flowing and... Uh... It's, uh, well, you know, it'll make you feel a whole lot better. It's good for hangovers, too. Come on, Nita. I, I gotta get to work soon. I am not as dumb as you always tell folks I am. Not by a country mile. And you're not gonna make up for this with a lot of kissing and hugging. Here's Daddy's journal, Justin. It's old. It started on the day that Mom died. The day I was born. How does it end? My dearest Madeline. 
Tonight I look at the world for the last time. It is a strange feeling. You at least had dawn in your eyes when you passed. But I am alone in this house. He wasn't alone. He wasn't alone. I was there. He didn't know it. In this house, where you and I had so many good years. It's all gone sour since then, my darling. I suppose you'll be wondering at my leaving the children this way. The truth is, they haven't needed me in years. And besides, I have nothing left to give them. Alex Wheeler made sure of that. All I can leave them is the wish that someday they see him paid in kind. He took everything I have. And tonight he made me go looking for him like a fool before all the people who had been my friends. There's nothing left for me. I leave life gladly to be with you. If there is a place where the dead can meet and talk. If not, I will be no more alone than I am now. Do you see now, Justin? Do you see why I can't sell Daddy's house to Alex Wheeler? I didn't need to read Daddy's journal to know that. But seeing it like this, in his own hand, it's a command. No more waiting. No more grief. Justin, what's wrong? What do you mean? What are you talking about? I'm talking about me and Alex Wheeler. Not about you. Not about Kate, Paige, Courtney, Ginny. Just me. Alex Wheeler, not anything else. I don't understand, but your eyes frighten me. There are a lot of ways to seek revenge. I have my course to follow. My family has theirs. You can seek revenge by trying to be happy in spite of Alex Wheeler. Sell him Dad's house. But I promise you, he'll never be happy with the with what he's earned with martial blood. Daddy, I swear by the life that you gave to me that I will avenge your death. I'll pay Alex Wheeler back Shame for shame, and blood for blood. And I'll use anyone or anything I have to, to see it done. And Justin Marshall pulled him out? You heard this at the hospital? No, I saw it happen at the track. But I've just come from the hospital, and Courtney says that Ricky is going to recover. It was close, Alex. So close, it makes me shiver. Ricky just lost control as he was taking the lead. Justin pulled him out seconds before the car exploded. Thank God for that. You should have seen him, Alex. Justin reached into that furnace of a car, somehow undid the shoulder straps, and lifted Ricky out like he weighed 10 pounds. Justin Marshall. 
I didn't think there were any heroes like that left. It was absolutely chilling to see. Makes sense, doesn't it? What does? That the son of Mike Marshall would be like that. That's true, Alex. And we owe Justin a lot for saving Ricky. But don't forget Ricky's warning. Justin may be brave and nerveless, but he's also uncontrollable. He can save a man or destroy one with the same ease. And now, the next part of Texas. Terry, I'd do almost anything to make things right with Justin and Don, but, but here I am concerned with my own problems. What can I do to help Ricky? Not a thing, Alex. He's in good hands at Gulf Coast Hospital. Perhaps you could talk him out of living so dangerously, but so far nobody's been able to do that. It'd be easier to talk a, a coyote into a kennel than to get Ricky to give up racing. Seems all the men I care for are set on reaching too far. My dear, that's the nature of the beast. In fact, just this morning, Clipper tried to buttonhole me into his scheme where he would serve as shipping agent for Tankier Oil. I told him to forget it. I've got enough problems with the marshals and Dennis without trying to squeeze a profit out of that situation. Did uh, Clipper tell you about his deal? He wanted me to approach you with the idea. I refused. Things got ugly. We fought our worst fight yet. Can you repair the damage? That's why I came in today instead of staying at the hospital. But I don't know if we can kiss and make up over this one. I hope I'm not at the... I'm not the only reason for your fight with Clipper. Right now, it seems like I'm at the heart of a lot of problems between Iris and Dennis and the Marshalls, and now... Can you go talk with Clipper? Yes. Yes, I will. Good morning, Mr. Wheeler's office. Yes, he's here, Mrs. Carrington. Good morning, darling. Of course. Bring in us over right away. I'm anxious to talk with him. We'll have lunch here at the club. You'll have lunch with me at the Club Striker and then come to my office for a talk? Good. See you then. Well, be kind. Did Sugar Daddy Alex give us a reason to celebrate? No. Wheeler's too stubborn to know a good deal when it's offered to him on a silver platter. It'll be a cold day in hell when I crawl back to him again. One fumbled ball and you run back to the bench crying. I see now why you're out of the pros. Just taking a breather, baby. I'm not in the showers yet. But I got a beautiful play coming up. I'm going to make the same offer to Stryker Bell. Stryker's a sweet little man, honey, but he doesn't know oil from sassafras. He's been into the legal side of oil for years. And he knows some of the biggest boys in shipping. Right. Stryker's going to cross Alex Wheeler and his multinational world oil to ship tankier crude in a fleet of 40-foot yachts. That is a, a big league idea, Clipper. That's where the squeeze play comes in, baby. Old Stryker doesn't know it, but he's already competing with Alex. But not for money. For mama. Stryker Bellman doesn't know. But Victoria Bellman has been having an affair with Wheeler for years. Really? Uh-huh. You better have proof, baby, right here, right in your hot little palm, because he's not going to listen to any gossip about his sweet little lady unless you have solid proof. Well, 
Well, here we go again. Why is it I keep finding myself living through the same old scene? I'm getting tired of reruns, Clipper. Like old times again, huh? Paige, Clipper, I hope I'm not barging in. Oh, well, we're used to it, honey, but uh, you fooled me. I thought you'd barged out. Actually, I've been at the hospital with my brother. Oh, yes, I did hear that he got into a wreck out of that little dirt track. Yes, he did. But he's going to be all right, as if you even cared. Look, if you two are going to have a pecking party, I'd rather be at the bar. Maybe you'd rather I leave, since in this room, three is a crowd. Perhaps you'd rather stay with Paige, since she probably kept you from getting lonesome last week. Oh, I tried, sweetmeat, but he was inconsolable. <laughs> but I'll leave him to you. You know where you can find your home. Look, Terry, I'm glad your brother's going to be okay. But if you're here to fight, don't. I've got more important things on my mind. Flipper, I didn't come here to fight. I came here because I want another chance to protect what we've got. What we've got? You walked out of the club on me. I think you took what we've got with you. Honey, I know you don't mean that. Let's kiss and make up, huh? We make a deal never to let business come between us again. We've got something more precious than money. You're right, baby. And I'd be better off if I always listened to you. But if I'm going to do a good job for Alex, like you always say I should, I'd better get into the dining room and take care of the folks I've got coming for lunch. See you later, kid. dark when we came in last night and I got clobbered by a chair. How's Ricky doing? Yeah, give us all the bloody details. Well, the operation went real well, but it's going to be a little while before he's mended, okay? Well, when he mends, he'll be just fine. That's news I've heard all day. Oh, Nita, there's two sets of visiting hours, one in the afternoon and one right now before we serve lunch. Uh, I don't think I'll be able to see him. Those are the same hours Billy Joe's here. Oh, go on over and cheer up that roach, honey. Probably make you both feel a whole lot better. But you said I, I was wasn't... tired. I don't know. I was different than myself usually. Besides, I might get you over your grumps. But you better hurry up, cause uh, you're gonna miss visiting hours. Me and the kid can hold down the fort. Okay, I'll leave. Um, uh, I'll see you later. Okay. Say howdy to the king of the road for me, will you? And thank him for the tickets. What's wrong with me? Oh, it ain't nothing. Her face hurts the worse she fell, that's all. Right there. She hit that there chair. Kabam! You be sure and watch yourself when you come in late at night. Like uh, next time you sneak in from seeing me at the club. <laughs> oh, no. I did that once, but never again. Why not, baby? It's always easier after the first time, you know. <laughs> uh, Billy Joe, I'm really tired. You know, I, I was up late last night at the hospital. You can sleep any old time. Come on, stand down here with me and we can uh, have ourselves a little chat. No, I don't think so, Billy Joe. I'm really tired. Just a minute, then. I ain't gonna bite you. Do I look like the kind of man who'd bite a woman? Besides, I've already had my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I got just the thing for you, you know? A nice cold beer. Help you relax a little bit and uh, make you feel a whole lot better. Forget about that brother of yours. It'll help you sleep a whole lot, too, you know? You know, you sound like that announcer at the racetrack who was hawking Wolf River beer. I <laughs> just hope you don't start howling. <laughs> well, okay, maybe just one little beer. There you go. To us, darling. And 
and to finding something to howl about. <laughs> Now, where is that girl? Justin, I left you and Dawn here to talk, not to fight. Now, if you argued and she went running back to the city and back to that boy before they're married. Hold on, Grandma. She went to call Stryker Bellman. We had a talk, a good talk. And we both agreed that we're going to sell the, the Houston house to Alex Wheeler and keep the ranch in one piece. Oh, oh <laughs> we really do have some reasons for celebrating. <laughs> Celebrate! Oh. <laughs> I hear someone call my middle name. Hi, you two. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Well, it's a ray of sunshine. No, it's the sun herself coming right into our kitchen. <laughs> oh, girl, you're full of life this morning. <laughs> you will stay for lunch, won't you? It's easy to set another place. Oh, thank you, Kate. I'd love to. I hear this grandson of yours almost cremated himself out uh. on the racetrack. Honey, your poor hands. Well, there's a little rest and a lot of Kate's good cooking. I'll just be rolling along. Oh, 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 oh. Now, don't you go rolling off before you've had lunch. I gotta get out and gather some greens for the salad. <laughs> so glad you can stay for that. <laughs> I was so worried about you. I mean, here I go, get you a nice, safe little job at KVIK TV, miles away from anything dangerous except maybe um, electrocuting yourself on a, a live wire or something. <laughs> and what do you do? Your first day on the job, you find yourself a racetrack and go jumping into a blaze an automobile. Well, you know, what are you talking about? I didn't take that job at KVIK to play it safe. I took it to get next to Alex Wheeler. But that's a dead end. I. I thought you told me that he had a long-running thing going with your mother. He's buying a house for Iris Carrington. I think he got your signals all mixed up. Honey, Iris is an old flame. Now, Alex is definitely dumping my mother for her. I guess that's why Vicky is out looking for a hotter fire these days. You know that I found her with her arms around my husband? I mean, that woman will go after any man who isn't fast enough. Especially if it's someone she can use to get even with me. So you watch out, honey, because that puts you high on her list. Did you tell Iris about Vicky and Alex? Oh, honey, Iris is head over heels for Alex. I just, I just couldn't do that. Kind of puts me in a corner, doesn't it? Yeah. Alex Wheeler's got a lot of several little games going here, doesn't he? We should uh, protect people from that, don't you think? Yeah. That snake at the top of the world. Justin, do you think that I should show Iris those pictures of, of Vicky and Alex? We should give it some thought. But I mean, uh, how can I say? I guess I'll have to get to know Iris Carrington better. Much better. Stay tuned for the conclusion of Texas. No, I, I asked him to wait in the outer office. Alex, I, I want you to know how terribly important it is to me that you make Dennis like you. But Iris, why all this urgency? Because he's become engaged. Engaged? That's wonderful. To no. Dawn Marshall, Alex. It's the worst thing that could possibly happen. As he gets closer to Dawn, he gets farther away from you, from us. We have to change his mind about you. We, you have to help me show him that... The dawn is wrong about you. Don't you see? He just has to accept the idea of our being together. Darling, you know I want Dennis's friendship and approval, but things like this don't resolve themselves overnight. It takes time. 
I'm not sure how much time we have. And Iris, it may not happen at all. Sometimes, sons and daughters, you know, they, they may not agree or accept their mother's decision. And even if they're Dennis's age. Oh, I know, I know. I've been watching Rena cook and the things she's putting Victoria through. Then why go on so about Dennis's approval? There is a reason, Alex. But please, we'll... Can we talk about that later? Dennis is waiting, and I... I had a hard enough time getting him over here. All right. We'll give it a try. Yeah. Ask me to come in. I know you two have already seen each other, but please, let's... Let's put that behind us and start fresh. Alex Wheeler, this is my son, Dennis Carrington. Good to meet you, Dennis. each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Texas. You also receive a remote control and that remote has a lithium battery in it so you don't even have to incur the expense of replacing the batteries now and again. And you stay entertained, right? I mean, whether it's long road trips, you have a whole slew of features in the sleek and I think a really modern design. What kind of playback formats 